So we're looking at Euler's method, which happens to be 6.1 in the Damana Waits uh, AP Calculus book. Uh, so first thing to note is the pronunciation. The, his name is pronounced Euler. Please pronounce it correctly. Uh, and the basis of Euler's method is to patch together a string of linearizations to approximate a curve over a longer stretch. A linearization, if you remember from before, is a tangent line uh, using a tangent line approximation. So this method of approximation uh, works best if you have a function that will gradually change in concavity. It's a numerical method, which means that we're computing it by um, tabularly. We will have a table of values. And so it allows us to approximate values if we have a differential equation uh, and an initial value. Even if I can't solve the differential equation outright, I can still get an approximate value. So we're going to start with a problem that we already know the answer, just to kind of see how it works, and then we're going to move on to something a little bit more interesting. So the first one says, use Euler's method with dx, or change in x, equals 0.5 to estimate f of 3 given that dy dx equals 2x minus 2 and f of 2 equals 4. So I'm going to make a table. Uh, start with my x value and then with the x value there's a y value. There's dy dx which is going to be the derivative at that point so in this case if I wanted to I could write dy dx and then I could tell myself that that is equal in this case to 2x minus 2 to fill that in and then I would be following along that slope uh, for 0.5 units of the change in x and so if I take dy dx and I multiply it by that 0.5 dx, that's going to give me a change in y. So let's start, and you'll see how this works and how we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to start with the point that I was given, the initial condition, that f of 2 is 4. So when x is 2, y is 4. dy dx then at that point would be 2x minus 2, which would be 2 times 2 minus 2, which is 2. And so if I'm following a slope, if you think about graphically, if I was at the point 2, 4, and I follow a slope of 2, so I'm going to follow that slope of 2, and I'm going to follow that for a change in x of 0.5 units. So I'm not actually going to go as far as it looks in the graph. I'm just going to go a tiny little bit. I'm going to go half of a unit there in x. So looking at this triangle, I know that the change here in x is 0.5. And I know that the slope of this is 2. So because slope is change in y over change in x, that must mean that if I take the slope, which is 2, and I multiply it by the change in x, which is 0.5, I get that the change in y would equal 1 there. And sure enough, uh, if I take 1 and divide it by 0.5 to find delta y over delta x, I can verify, just making sense of this, that delta y over delta x would be 1 over 0.5, which would give me a slope of 2 for that line segment. So that means that uh, the change in y would be 1 unit if the change in x was 0.5. So now the new x value is 2.5 because I've changed, uh, moved forward 0.5 units. But the change in y was 1 unit. So if I follow the linearization, I'd be at the point 2.55. And now I just repeat that again. Uh, and I'll repeat it until I get to where I want to go, which in this problem I'm going to be estimating f of 3. So I just have one more step to go. dy dx is 2x minus 2. Well, now the x coordinate has changed because I've moved forward a half of a unit. So this would be 2 times 2.5 minus 2 would be the slope here. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I'd have a slope of 3, and I'm going to follow that slope for a half unit change in x. So similarly, if I take the slope and I multiply it by the change in x, then that gives me the change in y, which in this case would be 1.5 units. So 
that means with the x value of 3, I would now have a y value of 6.5 because I was at a y value of 5 and I'm changing y by a positive 1.5 units. That means I can estimate that f of 3 is about 6.5. Notice that nowhere in this problem did I ever have to know what the actual function was. I, I have not solved for y. I'm just using the derivative and following little tangent lines to get this estimation. Of course, uh, to help make sense of this, I picked an example where we actually can know the answer because I can simply solve this initial value problem here. If I actually have dy dx, uh, create some room here, if I have dy dx equals 2x minus 2, then I know that y would equal x squared minus 2x plus c. And then given the initial condition uh, that f of 2 equals 4, then 4 would equal 2 squared minus 2 times 2 plus c. Uh, and so I get 4 equals 4 minus 4 plus c, so c equals 4. That means that the actual equation that I can solve for, this particular solution of the differential equation, uh, would be that y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4. Then I can actually find what f of 3 is to see how my estimate looks. So uh, in this case, f of 3 would be 9 minus 6 plus 4, which is 7. My estimate was 6.5. The actual value was 7. That's not terribly far off. Of course, if I take more steps, if I made dx smaller and I took more steps, then I would get a better uh, picture of what this looks like. So let's actually look at the graph and then look at the linearization so that we can see what's going on here and then we're going to do one more example. So if I was trying to graph y equals x squared minus 2x plus 4, uh, by completing the square I can see this is x minus 1 quantity squared plus 3, so the vertex is at the point 1, 3. The y-intercept would be at 4, and I would just have this nice little quadratic equation. Okay, so then with that parabola, um, if I use the slope at the point 2, 4, the slope at the point 2, 4, based on my table here, the slope at the point 2, 4 was 2, and I followed that for half of a unit, and that got me to the point 2.55. The graph would look like, here's 2, here's 3. So at 2.5, uh, let's see, let's make it a little bit nicer. At 2.5, if I follow this tangent line curve, that would take me to the point 2.55. So I'm a little bit off already. Uh, the parabola is concave up, so I know that my linearization is going to be an under approximation for the curve. Uh, so I'm a little off. But now I'm going to use 2.55 and think about, well, what if that was my initial point? And when I did that, I found that the slope was 3. So that means I'm following a slope of 3 here for another half of a unit. So I've got a half of a unit here which meant I went up 1, and then I went another half unit here, and I went up 1.5, and this arrives then at the point 3, 6.5, uh, which is the approximation. Turns out it actually, that curve actually goes through the point here, 3, 7. So, sorry for the little bit of a rough sketch, but I just added that in. I thought that was good for you to see. Here's a second example, a second and final example. 
uh, of using Euler's method to approximate y of 0.1 given y prime equals x minus y and y of 1 equals negative 4. And I'm uh, told to use a change in x of negative 0.3. Sometimes uh, the textbook actually calls this h, this small change in x. So please don't let that bother you if you see that that would equal h. Also, uh, dy dx is how we're generally used to seeing these. So if you want to rewrite that in the dy dx notation, you'd be welcome to do that. So again, I'm going to make a table here. I'm not going to try to uh, graph this or, or solve this outright. This is not a separable differential equation. So this is not an equation that I could just actually find what y of 0.1 equals, which is why Euler's method is actually helpful here. So I'm going to make my chart x, y, dy, dx. You can write what that equals if you like. And then dy, dx times dx, the change in x, which is going to give us the change in y. So I'm going to start at the point 1, negative 4. And the slope there would be x minus y. So 1 minus negative 4, which would be 5. And if I take that slope, uh, because I'm moving leftward, I have the y value at x equals 1, and I'm trying to get the y value at x equals 0.1. So I'm moving to the left. That's what makes this change in x negative. So the change in x dx is negative 0.3, and then that would give me a change in y in this case of negative 1.5. If I was at negative 4 for the y value, and now my change in y is negative 1.5, then that would make my new y value negative 5.5. The x value, I have changed x by moving leftward 0.3 units, so that would be the x value of 0.7. Then I just repeat the process. So now, here, the slope would be x minus y again, so that would be 0.7 minus negative 5.5, which would be 6.2. Sorry about that, Mark. Uh, and so then if I take 6.2 and I multiply it by the change in x, which again is leftward 0.3 units, I get negative 1.86 for the change in y. And yes, you are welcome to use your calculator on these problems. Uh, just make sure that you have work shown. So that means that at x equals 0.4, that the y value, I was at negative 5.5, and, and I would want to subtract 1.86 from that to get the new y value of negative 7.36. And then I need to do this one more time because I'm looking for an approximation for the y value when x equals 0 0.01. So I'll repeat the process. Uh, I would have the x minus the y, so 0.4 minus negative 7.36, and that gives me 7.76. And so I'd have a slope of 7.76 units that I am going to be following leftward negative 0.3 units. And that would be times negative 0.3. And that would give me a change in y of negative 2.328 units. So when x arrives at 0.1, then the y, 2.328, arrives at negative 9.688. So by using a string of three tangent line slopes, I'm getting an approximation that f of or y of 0 0.1 is going to be approximately negative 9.688. Uh, if you look at the slopes, the slopes are all positive here, and they're as I move from left to right, which would actually be up 
the table. Uh, the slopes are positive but decreasing, which means that this function would be concave down here. So you may end up seeing questions about what do you think about your approximation? Is it going to be an over or an under approximation? So you can just draw a little picture. Um, I wouldn't worry about trying to memorize anything. You can just draw a picture that if I started at the point 1, negative 4, you don't really need to even put that on axes. Uh, and there was a slope of 5 here, uh, and I was moving to the left. And then the next piece had a slope of 6.2, and then the next piece had a slope of 7.76, so getting steeper, steeper, steeper uh, to estimate that point. We can talk about then whether or not that would be over or under approximation. Go ahead and decide that for yourself. If you've had a chance to think about it, you can check out the sketch that I have. It's a pretty rough sketch. But as you can see, since we know that the function is concave down there, that means the tangent line approximation is going to be above the graph, which means that this estimate, the f of 0.1 is negative 9.688, is actually an over approximation, and the actual value of the function there would be lower. So I hope you've enjoyed Euler's method. Uh, have fun getting to your problems on that.